I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some, some time with us. And I think you're really going to enjoy our interview today. It's with Jordan Cooper. And Jordan, I appreciate you coming and sharing your story. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, you just told me that you had been listening to a few episodes of yeah. the Ex-Mormon Files, and uh, it's been kind of interesting, but you've actually been out of the church for almost 20 years. Yeah, right? yeah. 20 years this summer. Yeah. Where were you born? I was born in Ogden, Utah. Yeah. Um, my dad was born in Ogden, Utah. Uh, <laughs> we come from, I'm a sixth generation Mormon. Are you really? And both my mom and my dad's side. Um, were they polygamous? Actually, me and my great-grandfather was a polygamist. He was the first blacksmith in Utah, and he had four wives. Oh, my goodness. From the fourth wife. Yeah. And he's buried in Farmington. Wow. And there's still part of his blacksmith shop still there in Farmington. Oh, my goodness. So it's kind of, that's kind of cool. Did, did, uh, and you mentioned earlier to me that one of them was, or one or more was with the Mormon Battalion. Oh, yeah. On both my mom and my dad's side, the Tippets and the Hess, both oh. were um, from... Yeah, on the Mormon battalion. So we have a long line of, of Mormon activity, and we oh were goodness. very active as I was growing up. Were you? Mom and dad active? Mom and dad very active. Married my dad in the temple and married all. in the temple. I was born under the covenant. Yeah. I was the second of five children. Oh, wow. So. And uh, your dad actually still a temple worker. Is yes, that, is yes, that right? he is still. He still attends <laughs> and works at the temple. So go through primary, I guess? And primary, seminary. Primary when it was midweek. <laughs> oh, my. I remember that. Yep, yeah, and uh, two sun, two blocks of uh, church blocks on Sunday. I remember too. all of those yeah. things. I all of the little changes yeah. going throughout. And the young women's program. And, uh, and... yep, yeah, young women's program, and graduated from seminary, and yeah. then uh, was, was married all... in the temple to a return missionary, the oh, Logan yeah? Temple. Was all this uh, high school and everything here in Utah? Yes. Okay. Yes. So had you waited for this missionary? No, um, I, I was kind of a rebellious teenager, cause so I was kind of fell away a little bit. But then we met at a young adults party and did you? And um, had you always assumed and, you were going to get married? To I temple? figured that was all that would take to be happy. Yeah. I even had the erroneous uh, idea when I was oh, I was married at nineteen. And I actually seriously thought around that time that I could have my calling and election made sure because I was going to just be so good, you know. And endured it. Naive, end and... naive youth. <laughs> was he uh, 21, I guess, or so? so uh, yeah, it, were yeah, your he's folks five okay years older with than you getting me. married. And... Oh yeah, they thought it was great because because I did go through a little bit of a rebellious. They were a little worried. Were Maybe that might. It was like okay. They were praying everything's hard. going fine. <laughs> praying hard. What was your testimony of? of the church at that point? Uh, um, I knew the church was true. I had a very strong testimony. Yeah. I had prayed about it. Um, I, the only thing I, I, I wanted to be very honest with myself. So I would always say, I know the Book of Mormon's true. I know the church is true. I believe that the prophet is a true prophet, you know, because I wanted to be honest no. <laughs> because I hadn't had that 
that good feeling, that burning in the bosom feeling for that. So Not about him, but you could. But I could really say that about the Book of Mormon, and and you know, and thus the church and. Yeah. Stuff Any questions like come up at all during these high school or seminary days? No. There weren't a lot. You were... It was one of the first that I knew of that actually had left the church. I knew there was some Jack Mormons, yeah. but that was a little different. They just, yeah. you know, were but, lazy about going to church or but, something. <laughs> but now going into the temple and uh, with your husband, and he's active, of course, returned yeah. missionary. and yes. did that activity continue, I guess, as you yeah, start we, having a family? You end up with seven children with him? And, um, yeah, right? well, I, I one of, during my rebellious phase as a teenager, I had a child, and that's oh, okay. why I think I worried my parents so much. Oh, okay. um, I actually went to an LDS foster home during the pregnancy. Hope, oh. They were hoping I would probably relinquish the baby, but I didn't. So yeah. um, I had six children with him. Okay. And... Um, so we had the seven children, very, very close right together. Along, yeah. <laughs> We're just being good, dutiful. I'm very Mormons. good and <laughs> dutiful Mormon. I did not get a higher education or, or a job. I stayed home and I raised the Took kids. Care of the and, kids and, and still active in the church. Did you have scary. callings? And oh yeah, I was um, probably every class there was in primary plus sure. the primary presidency. Yeah. Um, the homemaking teacher, the gospel essentials teacher. I mean. Yeah, throughout my years, there was a lot of callings. I was a, I was in the a den mother. Oh, I remember yeah. for a while. Cub Scouts and, and stuff. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's just it's interesting because uh, that it's our whole life, isn't it? I mean, it it's is. our, we can't think of anything else almost. I mean, right. it's just totally. So, what happens uh, going on in life that uh, starts making change? Well, a change? at this point, we we were up in or I lived up in Oregon, and and I was recently. Um, going through a divorce. So I was a single mom of seven. So it, oh my goodness. I, it, I guess it makes my compassion for like, I have two and I'm single. And I'm like, I had seven and I was single. But um, I also had a really good friend. I was trying to, I didn't want to be on the dole. So I was trying to get my own business started mm. and um, selling wheat and really? food storage Just... products and stuff like that. And uh, the manager of a warehouse I was renting happened I didn't know he was a retired pastor. I found this out later, but he was my friend. We became friends, the manager yeah. and I. And I thought, well, this is a good opportunity to get him to, you know, go to church. And oh, to, to convert, convert him to Oh, Mormon, yeah, I was always thinking converting, yeah. always, you know. Um, so you make a little deal. So we with make him a deal. Something. He, yeah. I, he says, I will go to your church if you go to mine, and that was a scary proposition for me. And I'm like, well, I guess that's fair, but, but I had always been told to stay out of those other churches. You know, there was God did not dwell. Yeah. What did you think about Christian churches looking at uh, it from a Mormon's point of view without having been? Without having been. Well, I had been to the Manti pageant, and so I saw the different, a little bit of a different flavors that they show of Christian churches, like raising their hands or, oh. or singing. And I just, well, I guess that's just Christian churches. I, I felt that, you know, they, they were sincere people and yeah. good people, but they just didn't have the truth. They weren't the true church. They, they weren't the true were church. Going through the motions or something. And yeah, I mean, you know, immoral, wanting yeah. something, but just not really yeah. getting it. Yeah. <laughs> So what happens? So we did do, we, he, I went to his church first because our ward was meeting in the afternoon and his always met in the morning. So I went into his church and I was already uncomfortable, but uh, these people I knew around town were there and they were acting so weird. They were clapping and saying hallelujah and raising their hands, <laughs> raising their hands. It was culture shock. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, but, but I felt okay there. Everybody was so friendly and really welcoming. And I was like, I really feel the spirit here. And I'd only really felt the spirit a few times, maybe like when we watched family home evening videos or something, yeah. not so much in church really, but I could really feel. And, and felt so like, well, that, that can that, that there was be, this huh? dissonance going on in my, in my brain. I'm like, yeah. how could that be? And yeah. well, it's the music because music is yeah. emotional. Sure. And, uh, so I, I just attributed it to that. The sermon, I, I was, was going ask to you about the message. Was pick it? every little thing so we could, because we were kind of already Comparing debating. Notes, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
like, I'm going to pick out all these little, I had notes, I was going to take notes, but there was nothing. He, he just spoke from the Bible. He talked about Jesus. I mean, Heaven okay. Heaven forbid. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay. So we went to my church. I was like, now it's my turn. Because he, he told me, well, Mormons aren't Christian. I'm like, well, well, what we do you are mean? too. <laughs> church of Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. So he went and there was a girl, just came back from girls camp. Oh dear. And so they were all like, oh, we had so much fun and we did this so and was, so the, and so tripped and did this. The, and the sacrament meeting was That was the, the sacrament meeting. Oh, okay. And he goes, where, you know, I, this is your main meeting, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where's Jesus? I don't know, but it's just, it's girls camp. So, so you said, okay, this is the way. All right, I'll bite the bullet. Is. Let's do this again next week, you know. Okay. So we did it again the next week. And once again, his church is singing about Jesus and praising Jesus. And, and everything is about, you know, God. just That's God. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the message was really good. It was about, you know, right from the Bible. There was nothing I could find to debate about. And we went back to our sacrament meeting and... With him, he went again? With, he went, okay. he went again. I had kind of had to talk him into it, but he, he all right. And uh, it was the scouting program, which <laughs> had nothing to do with, with Jesus, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I think that was the seed, you know, that was a seed planted with me because he says, you know, I was ashamed because, yeah, where's it's Jesus? It's embarrassing, isn't, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, where's the foundation of our church? Isn't he the cornerstone, you know? Yeah. And uh, so he says, I'm not coming back. And I started really paying attention. And it was at least two months before someone's talk in sacrament meeting had anything to focused do with Jesus, focused on Jesus. On Jesus. But and things I, like home teaching, I, temple attendance, or all kinds of good tithing, things, genealogy, yeah, tithing, um, yeah. what, you know, home teaching, yeah. Isn't that funny? No, Jesus. Yeah, and it, but the assumption is, as Mormons, that we are all about Jesus. Wouldn't you say that? I mean, I, I mean, I that's, guess so. But when you're trying to bring somebody and saying we are Christian, you're thinking all the songs and all of the talks. It should be, the focus well, should I, be Jesus. I know it should be, but, we, <laughs> but and on the other hand, I, I just think if somebody had come to me and say, well, don't you worship Jesus? Well, we do all the time. That's what, that would have been my answer, I think. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I didn't ever put into, well, yeah, our sacrament meetings really don't ever cover Jesus, and we cover him once every four years in Sunday right. school, but right. it's all about Jesus. What else is there? But, right. but it is, in fact, it isn't true, is it? You it's know? not. So you went and for I another two months it. and looking for a message. Yeah, and, and in the meantime, I'm thinking, I really liked his church because I liked to praise God. But then I liked my church because then I could be quiet and reverent, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I really needed God that time in my life yeah. anyway. So I was, I was really hungering for, for direction, okay. I, I guess at that time in my life. So I was going to his in the morning still, <laughs> going to mine in the afternoon. Was he pleased with this? Uh, yeah, but he, he never pushed or anything. Yeah. He never, you know, he I didn't figured feel... He just figured you'd figure it out eventually. I yeah. guess so. I'm sure I was in his prayers. <laughs> I'm sure he had the confidence that you'd see the, the difference yeah. and the contrast. So then what happened? You had quite an experience. Uh, yeah, two months, uh, about two months into that, they have what's called an altar call. And... After the sermon, sometimes the pastor will get up and say, anybody who wants to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, you know, come up and we'll pray with you. And I'm like, every time he did that, I'm like, I know that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. You know, he always has been. I don't need to go up there. But I felt something push me up one Sunday. And now I know it was the Holy Spirit. But, but I got up there and I went, okay. So I got down on my knees and I prayed, you know, repented, you know, a prayer. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, it was probably only a few minutes, it seems like. And maybe if I really pushed it, I might have been down there five to ten minutes. But when I got up, the whole sanctuary was empty. <laughs> what had happened? And while I was down there on my knees, um, I remember there was this tingling that started in my toes and came up throughout my whole body. And it was, it's hard to describe, it was almost a burning. 
and then it went all the way out and I started speaking quietly not loud like I have seen but I started speaking in tongues but I knew my spirit was praying and I was okay with it it didn't freak me out it was just new and when I got up I felt very weak and then I saw everything is empty and I'm like how long have I been down you know praying and he says oh like a good 45 minutes you know and you didn't even realize and that. I had no it was the twilight zone but I says I don't know really what happened he goes explain it to me and I told him what had happened and he started opening up the Bible now I was good enough and active enough that I had read the Bible as a Mormon as a Mormon congratulations <laughs> and he showed me scriptures I had never seen before. Yeah, I don't know how I could have missed the scriptures. Who put those in there? I, but he showed me thing. how I had been baptized with the Holy Spirit. He says, this, you know, every time this, it may be different for everybody, but it's always life altering. Yeah. You know, there's similarities. You can't deny it. You can't yeah. deny it. It yeah. happens to you. It's, it's, it's an overnight thing. It's not a thing that goes on for years and years. It's a, it's an event, and it's kind he of showed like, me how I was a new creature in yeah. God, and I was like, yeah, he, he goes, how do you feel? And I said, like, I don't know, clean, <laughs> new. And he goes, and he started opening up all these scriptures, showing me what I'm talking about. Yeah, but it was biblical. Yeah. I had never seen those scriptures. Where did they come <laughs> from? And and that still happens sometimes. I'm like, oh, <laughs> learn new things all the all time. the time. That Bible is alive now. I remember I would read my scriptures. It was a chore, but I would do what I needed. You know, yeah. I would do my assignment. I would read the stuff. But now I can't get enough. I have a Bible in my purse, a Bible in my car, a Bible <laughs> in my studio. <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like me too. I go to two Bible studies during the week plus the, the Sunday. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So did you continue going into the LDS church for a little bit? You've had I fa- actually you have children, I guess. Were did, they yeah. It was or? really hard. And I even my oldest ones were even going to seminary and it was difficult. Um I did keep going because I knew that Mormon church was true. I didn't yeah. there was that night though. God spoke audibly to me, and, I, and, and I'm praying, and I'm like, what is going on? What's happening? What now? <laughs> and God says, you know, all your life, we've been close. You know, I've always had this good relationship with God. I've been the ocean, and you've been in a boat. He said, you felt that he was the ocean, and you were yeah. in the boat. And he says, I've always held you up all your life. I, I'm the one that's been holding you up. And any time you could talk to me, you could touch me, touch me, you could, you know, smell me, you know, and just reach out and I'm and I'm there. And you knew that. Now I want you to get out of the boat. And I want you to get into me and I will be in you and you will be in me. And all of these other scriptures that never meant anything to me suddenly started making sense to me in the New Testament, how we are in him and he isn't. He literally it, it that is literal for us to take that. Now, I will admit there was a couple years I hung on to the side of the boat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you had a great testimony of the Book of Mormon. It was a very difficult thing to give it up. It was. That's probably why what I did hung on to the side of the boat so long. God kind of sensed to you something about that, too. Yeah. God. God's a gentleman. He didn't doesn't just rip everything away from you, you know, like you got to burn everything, you know. And He says, you know, I said, but I know the Book of Mormon's true. So how can this be true? But the church isn't true. And he says, you know, I want you to start. I was square one, me and my Holy Bible. The Book of Mormon, if it's true, it's not going anywhere. Let's put it aside. Let's put it on the shelf. It'll be there. It will be there. So when you are ready, you know, if it's true, we'll go on and we'll learn more about that. But I want you to start at square one because right now it's like a dovetail you know, you don't know what's true and what's not. So let's just forget everything. Now you start a, from square one. Now you know that you were a babe in Christ. I was a babe right. in Christ. Yeah. And learning the, new things. Did you share this with family? And it's difficult, isn't it? Because you really don't know everything I at that point. I don't. I, I did try to um, share with my family. I kind of wrote my experience out and sent it about. And, yeah. And it was mostly ignored, and, and I learned later my dad told people not to read it. And, oh. 
things like that. But, you know, and that's okay because I understood. Be, I didn't take it personally because I understood. I was you were just there. recently there. Yeah. And uh, there was one time I was at my grandmother's and she was talking about how her um, Relief Society president had just been, you know, excommunicated because she said she was speaking to Jesus personally and I, I and she didn't know the whole story but the Holy Spirit said you need to go and talk to this person and my dad had been asking me all these questions over and over and I couldn't answer him and I you know I was so frustrated and it is frustrating because you know you're a new creature you know something's happened you've been born again but I can't answer anybody's you questions yeah, you don't know, you don't <laughs> know I didn't know Mormonism well enough to answer questions and I lunk. certainly didn't know Christianity well In enough Bible, yeah. and uh, so I went to this um, Relief Society president former Relief Society president and I went okay I'm gonna look like a fool but I really feel led to be go and say hi to her. So I went up to her door and knocked, and I says, you know, this is my name, and <laughs> I just felt Not led sure to come and I'm say here. hi. I don't know why I'm here, and, you know, I'm, like, I'm a fool. And she goes, I know why you're here. I have the answers to those questions that your father's been asking you. I have them all typed out for you. Oh my goodness. Come on in. And I'm just like, so <laughs> this is how God <laughs> treats his children, yeah. you know, and, 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 the whole year, I felt like I was in the wilderness with all of these miracles happening to me. I'm, I saw financial miracles and yeah. healing miracles. I mean, true miracles. Like, my youngest daughter was com profoundly deaf and can now hear as well as I can. I mean, wow. we were seeing, we were really seeing, seeing God yeah. in our lives suddenly. Now, I... I don't know this, we haven't talked about it, but uh, because of the temple marriage and your children and all that, did you feel some guilt, uh, as a Mormon at least, that you weren't living up to the commandments and not doing all you were supposed to? All the time, all the time did I feel guilt because... And how is that now with this uh, that, grace of Jesus Christ that we didn't understand as I, Mormons? Such a burden, such a burden lifting off, just... And, and, and it took a while for me to get out of that guilt. And I find that's the number one thing when I t do talk to former LDS now, and even people who are still LDS. That's yeah. kind of the overlying thing. Everybody has this guilt. Yeah, they're trying to work, Everybody work does. so hard to make it, and, and we know we're and sinners. And there's so much freedom in Christ <laughs> yeah. and peace. And, it, you know, I remember actually thinking that while I was still married to my first husband. And I thought... In the Bible, it says that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Why and am I doing what? Why is it I'm not feeling this? I am feeling so overloaded down yeah. and so guilty because there's no way you can do your genealogy and go to the temple every week and do your family home evening and do your go the extra mile in your church calling and everything and still raise these children and yeah. have this nice home and... You can't do everything. You cannot do everything. And so, of course, you're going to feel guilty because you always know, well, I could have done a little bit more every day. And yeah. so. Well, you kind of feel, for me, it was kind of like going up the ladder. I went to the temple. I did my home teaching before the 31st of the yeah. month, you know, and or visiting teaching, whatever. And, and, then, uh, and then when you do something wrong or you don't endure quite like you should, you fall, kind of fall back down the ladder and yeah. There is such a freedom. Did you feel that immediately, or did, did God kind of... I think that took see, take, time. It took a little while, too. I, I think that took time. I was still trying to live the good life. I was yeah. still trying to be a good person for Jesus, yeah. you know? Now, do you, have, have you found that Christianity, though, is, can be a challenge? Can be? I mean, you have to think on your own, don't you? You don't have oh, things yeah. handed to you. Do you right. Have you oh. sensed that at all? I, I think in some ways it's harder. Well, that's what but I, a lot of the peace more makes it easy. Oh yeah, yeah. so much. Oh, there was no way, you know. Still to this day, my my dad, even though it's been decades since I've left, my dad still says, you know, you need to come back to the church. And every once in a while, he'll say, you wouldn't be so angry all the time. And I'm like, I'm not angry all the time. And once he came and stayed with us for like five weeks, and he goes, oh, you're so loving. You're not angry all the time. <laughs> I went, no, that's. Well, that was a good thing to have you see. You were you. thinking I needed to be because I had left the church, but I don't remember the last time I was angry now. The Holy Spirit, you know, I have this this inward joy, have and you, you don't you, have that. 
Have you been able to share that with him, kind of? Did I've he tried. sense that? Yeah. I've tried. I think he does sense it. Yeah. I think he doesn't know how to deal with, with yeah. when I talk to him because he's like, you can't have the Holy Spirit, you know, you can't. Well, but well, I do. <laughs> well, we assume that the only true church is the only one with the Holy Spirit. And, right, right. Yeah, so no, it's, it's, it's hard for him to, yeah, yeah, come to terms with all that. But I think he does sense that I love Jesus very much. And, yeah. Well, and I know you, you were quoting a, a scripture from Matthew that you, I think, wanted to share a little bit. Yes, um, I do. The thing, I, was, I came upon this, and it just really struck a chord with me. There's, it's Jesus talking, and it's in the book of Matthew, and it says, In that day, they'll come and saying, Lord, Lord, you know, didn't we do all these great works in your name? We prophesied in your name. We cast out devils. We did all these wonderful works in your name. And then Jesus says, um, and I will say, I, and I will profess unto them, I do not know you. Get away from me, you who do works of iniquity. Yeah. I'm like, these are good church people. Yeah. They're doing many marvelous works. They're even casting out devils and prophesying and in his name. Certainly puffed up in their pride, for yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> but they're doing it in his name. They're doing everything right. Yeah. And Jesus is saying, I never knew you. And I think that's the key. We need to know Jesus. It's not the works. It's not the religion. It's, yeah. it's our personal what, relationship with Jesus is what really matters and what really is going to yeah. save us. And what he did on the cross. I'll bet the cross means a little different to oh. you now. Oh, yeah. I mean, we just thought it was a Garden of Gethsemane and just a little suffering here or there, but that the sacrifice It means everything. On the cross to me now what he did is he gave me life yeah. on that cross and well jordan we are almost out of time have you got anything you want to say to your family or friends or something or? just don't be scared to ask questions okay. and look i mean there are so many and you don't even have to go off of things that are not lds literature to really study and but I think the biggest thing really is not just study, it's, it's ask Jesus, please come into my life in such a real personal way. And read the Bible and, and yeah. get As, to know. Read like the you Bible said, for yourself. Like you said, you see things there that you'd never thought before if you can just step back and read it as a child. Exactly. Yeah. That's, yes, well, Jordan, I agree with that. thank you so much for sharing your story. It's wonderful. And, you know, I, I see a lot of similarities between our story and just uh, uh, family history and everything else. But yes. thanks for coming. And thank we'll you. see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.